removed from the tournament here. Just your overall thoughts on on this season and what the big work uh, is that needs to be done going into the offseason ahead of the next year. Well, kind of like we said at the start of the season, I expected a roller coaster ride, and that's kind of what we got. We were a little up and a little down and kind of all around. And, um, you know, at times I was really pleased with how we played. Certainly we played good basketball early in the year. We kind of faltered toward the middle and end of uh, Pac-12 play, but then turned it around in the, you know, in the NCAA tournament, won a couple of games, which I think is really, really important. Uh, so... You know, overall thoughts, um, you know, just uh, <laughs> kind of the same thing, a mixed bag. I, I, I'm really proud of how we finished the season, certainly. And, uh, and I think that's going to bode well. I think just the fact we made the, the tournament, made some noise, won some games, I think we'll do this young team well. Uh, but some good individual performances, uh, you know, it was a growing experience. And so a uh, lot more good than bad. And what was the second part of that, Andrew? Uh, just what I guess you and the staff have identified as, as the big areas to work on going into this off season and ahead of next. Well, I think the main thing is we've just got to spend some time in the gym and in the weight room, uh, weight room, especially, I think strength is, is going to be uh, paramount. Uh, we're going to, hopefully maybe play a little bit more power basketball in the future. And, uh, and so, yeah, we, we've just got to, got to get bigger and stronger and, and, uh, and that includes our perimeter kids. Eric Scopel, 24 seven. Just want to get a reaction from the news with Taylor and, and jazz transferring out. And then obviously Taylor now facing you in the back 12, a little bit at Arizona, just kind of the reaction to, to how that all played out. Yeah, I don't know how that'll play out. I mean, I, I'm sure she'll play motivated when we uh, when we play them, but so will we. I mean, um, you know, I'm I'm okay. I've never really worried about where players go once they leave our program. I just, you know, if they don't want to be here, then then I don't really care where they go, quite frankly. And uh, you know, Jazz and uh, Taylor, you're always disappointed when you lose transfers. Uh, you know, because they become part of of your family, and and they always will be. I mean, you know, I don't know how many times I've been a reference to kids who've transferred out of the program. We try to always leave it in a positive way. And I get it. I think, you know, everybody who was around the program kind of saw what was happening. And, you know, the reality is they just wanted to play more and, and didn't feel like that that was going to be the case at, at Oregon. I think they enjoyed their experiences here. At least that's what they said. And, uh, yeah, I think it really came down to, you know, they, they just needed a better fit somewhere else. And um, so, you know, I wish them well. I, I do. But like I said, at the same time, it still hurts. It's just disappointing. And guess what, you guys? You've seen the portal. It's just uh, that's the way you do business anymore. You know, it's just going to it's a part of, of what you do. I don't I don't think any any programs immune now from from losing players. Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. Kelly, obviously, uh, Tihana, Tahina played a big role for you. Maddie came on late with a key role. I'm curious, are you looking forward to the next offseason of developing Kylie and Angela and Sydney and really getting to work with them more? No question about it. And when people talk about the two transfers that we just lost, well, you're going to try and fill their, their roles or, or fill their uh, roster spots. And I, I like what I have, you know, and I've always enjoyed uh, a smaller roster. I think everybody feels more engaged right now. I just look at the guard line, just look at the guard uh, that we'll have coming back. You've got Maddie Shear, Tahina, Taylor Mike Sell, Sydney Parrish, and then Taylor Bigby, our incoming freshman. Those are five really good guards. Uh, you also add into that mix an Angela Duglich who could swing and play that three spot for us as well. So you're looking at really, really quality players. And then inside with Sedona, Niara, uh, Kylie, uh, and then, uh, and then Angela as well, who can, uh, who can play inside. And then, you know, we have a, a, a freshman come in and uh, Filipina uh, chase. So, you know, it's uh, I think we've got the, the right mix. Uh, Ariel Wilson, I forgot her as well. So 
Um, I, I, I think the smaller roster will help. Yes, I'm looking forward to really working with with players like Kylie. I think Kylie's got a, a, a high ceiling. You know, right right now when she was playing behind two pros and a fifth year senior, so uh, you know her her um, minutes are going to go up. They need to, and she needs to to continue to improve. But she's a really really good player. Just to mention the one, I can't remember who else you mentioned there, uh, Ryan. But um, we all got to get better. Uh, just. You know, obviously, Sydney played a role, obviously, and Kyle and uh, Angela, but you didn't get a full offseason to develop them as true freshmen. Yeah, and it's going to be valuable for us. Yeah, this was the toughest year. I talked to every coach, you know, or every coach that I talked to said this was the worst year to, to have a young team. We just didn't have time to work with them. We really had no offseason last year, no summer preparation. And so now we will. And, uh, and we're a quarter school. So that means we can work them out, you know, until June, into June, which I think is a real advantage for us over some semester schools. And, uh, and we'll need it. We're starting up on Monday. So I'm really looking forward to it. James Crepia, Oregonian. With that in mind, Kelly, just wanted to, an update on Tahina, Niara, and Maddie in terms of will they be able to start with, if you're starting on Monday, will they be back uh, in that capacity or are they still limited and for, for how long? No, uh, I think they're all good. Yeah. They've been uh, rehabbing and uh, I know a lot of our players have been at home. So, um, um, you know, I always give them off two to three weeks. Uh, I think this year it even worked out to be more after the season, just always done that. I think rest and, and uh, relaxation is good for them. But from what I understand, they're all good to go. In fact, Tahina, I believe, is uh, uh, at the trials or will be at the trials here in a day or so uh, for the America or and Sedona. So, um, you know, that's uh, quite an honor to be invited. That's a kind of a who's who of college basketball players, and they're both well-deserved. So uh, I don't think uh, T, I, even though I haven't seen her since the season, actually, I haven't seen her since our, yeah, our last game, you guys, because then I went from there to Indy. And, uh, and then everybody's been gone, but uh, I don't think she would have accepted the invitation if she wasn't uh, healthy. Hayden Herrera. Hey, Kelly, you talked about the transfers, but this isn't the first time you've had a lot of transfers um, leave the program. I, I, I had to look back at 18. You had Mallory and uh, Sierra and Ina and uh, Annalie leave. What was the key to just making sure that that you know, transition of players didn't affect the, the team going forward? Well, I wouldn't consider two transfers a lot of players. I, I don't know what is, but I, I don't think two is. Um, uh, you know, I think it's it's part of the game now. I mean, my, my goodness, look at who people are adding and losing. It's 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 like free agency in the NBA. It truly is. And so I, I don't really concern myself with that. It, you know, we're we're keeping our core of players and. You know, if they were all transferring because, you know, there were just issues within the program, then that's one thing. But that group that you mentioned in 18, you know, Sierra Camposano wanted to go play. Mallory McGuire wanted to go play, and they ended up having good careers at mid-major programs. And, uh, you know, and I think that kind of attrition is, I wouldn't say necessary, but I don't think we've had as many transfers as a lot of programs. You know, Gino has as many as anybody, but nobody really says anything there because it's Gino, <laughs> you know? So uh, it's just, it's part of the game now. I don't get too concerned about it, but that's, it's, yeah, it's a good question. And it's, it's worth bringing up you guys, but that portal, man, I, I don't get on it. I have not been on it. I don't understand it, but my staff does. And they'll give me a, a name here and a name there, but, like Norman Dell said in Hoosiers, when I went out there to to watch or to see that place in Indiana, I actually bought a shirt that says Hickory on the front, and then on the back it says My team is on the floor. So I think that's kind of the attitude I'm taking. My team's on the floor, right? I, I like what I have. This is a group I think we can develop. Rob Mosley, go to us.com. You know, last year. Preseason, we were talking a lot about the three-point shooters, and it seemed like that was kind of be, going to be the identity of the team. And by the end of the year, Sedona and Niara had really asserted themselves. And you mentioned wanting to play more power basketball. Do you think, I mean, are, are kind of those twin towers, maybe plus Kylie and some others, is that going to be kind of the identity of next year's team? 
Well, it remains to be seen. I mean, that's certainly our strength. I think Niara and Sedona are potential first round draft picks. So if they can just stay healthy and really have a good off season, uh, you know, I think we've got a chance to be really tough inside. I, I truly do. And add to that Kylie and Angela and, and Philly. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's where they'll go. I don't think that'll make three-point shooting less of a priority. You know, our, our problem this year, well, there, there were a lot of them, but I think part of it is we were able, never able to really get our, our three-point shooters the looks consistently that they needed because we couldn't really attack the basket. We didn't have anybody that was getting double teamed. Um, you know, we weren't creating your three pointers come from extra passes and spreading the floor and people helping. And we just never got to that point. So if we can do that by getting the ball inside. And if you look, Rob, in the NCAA tournament, we actually shot the three quite well. We didn't we didn't make a ton or shoot a ton, but but we actually shot it better than we did during the season. So, um, yeah, I, it's still a work in progress. I don't know. We haven't had an off season with this this group. We'll see. But I, I really like the group I have, you guys. And I know they've been picked pretty high in some of the preseason looks, which I think is a real testament to, you know, the, our program, number one. I mean, you're talking about a program that is one of only six. And you're talking who's who, Stanford, UConn, Baylor, South Carolina, Louisville, and Oregon, who've made the six, Sweet 16 at least in each of the last five years. So I'd put us in that elite program. I don't think we're going to go anywhere. Well, if I could follow up real quick, just how much, you know, it, the ability to have a normal off season and for the kids to play pickup and things like that, how much can that help with ball movement and spacing the floor and just kind of figuring out, you know, wh where a player wants the ball and when to deliver it, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, immensely important, Rob. And I think that's an area that uh, in women's basketball, generally we, we, just it's 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 tough our kids just don't play that much you know like when we practice you're, you're you're practicing but it's the off season where they really develop kind of their their feel for the game spacing uh you know their ability to take people off the dribble things like that i i just think it's uh um i think really important and we do we just want them to play and i can't wait till we get our practice guys back too because i think that always helps Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, Coach, I was going to ask about the shooting, but I'll go on another question. Uh, in any business vocation, even though you give 100%, I know with me, you just look back and think, oh, I could have done something differently. Uh, is there anything, you, even though you know you gave your best or anything, you could now look back and say, we could have done something a little bit differently? Well, I think you have to as a coach. You have to self-evaluate. Uh, otherwise, you're not a very good coach, and you're going to make the same mistakes. Uh, you know, maybe I, I give some um, some other players, especially the young ones, maybe a little bit more time to see what they could do. Uh, uh, at the same time, I, I, I think I hurt us by trying to play too many players. And uh, we never really got into the kind of rhythm that we needed to. Um, I think, you know, we kind of went into the season feeling like we could play the same way that we had in the past. A lot of ball screen motion, spread you out. We just weren't that good in it. And so I think that's why during the middle of the year, we really started to, to you know, play, well, not power basketball, but look to get it inside a little bit more. And then I think that hurt us a little bit because now we're transitioning to try and do something else. And then we finished the year with a hybrid of the two. And so, you know, I think this this year will just now that we have a whole year or off season to really I didn't know what I had, you know, <laughs> when you can't work with somebody, you don't know that, oh, this player who you thought could play in the pick and roll, they can't, you know, you just assume they could, they can't. And, uh, you know, so I think now we have a chance to, to work on them with, with, you know, about the things that we want them to get better at, you know, that really fit us. And then it gives us a chance to get to know them, their strengths uh, and weaknesses a little bit better. So, yeah, we all have to try to be better at our jobs, right? Including you guys. Andrew Hobner. Well, then, <laughs> um, when you go back and look at this season, I know you're a guy that, that prides himself on, on his offensive schemes and his X's and O's. Where would you rank this year? 
among the hardest for you just in terms of trying to find a system that worked and an offensive scheme that worked and, and the frustrations that might have occurred when you're trying a bunch of different things, like you said? The most difficult year I've had since I got here. It rivals that very first year. Uh, the difference was this year, I thought we had some good players. It was just trying to figure out the uh, system, the, the style that would work. Okay. I it just, again, and, and we had so many injuries this year. You guys don't even know about, we had players that just weren't practicing and then they'd show up in the games. And since you guys weren't at practice, you wouldn't get to see that. Uh, so it was just a, it was in flux the whole year. It was crazy. Now my first year, at Oregon. I don't know if you were around, Andrew, you're a young guy, but you know, we, we struggled then because we just weren't, um, you know, talent wise that great. And, uh, and so it was a scramble each game, you know, how can we just be competitive? You know, how can we find a basket here and there? So th those, those were the two biggest challenges, but, but I would say this uh, with pandemic and everything else was by far the most challenging offensively. Um, Ryan Thorburn. Kelly, you've had some of the biggest stars in the sport recently. Obviously, Sabrina Sedona was on Good Morning America the other day. How do you think name, image, and likeness will impact women's college basketball if that comes down the road? And, and how many, what would your deal with Wendy's be like uh, selling those green chili cheeseburgers if there was NIL back then? Who knows where I'd be? I, I'd be Brad Pitt's co star. In, in motion pictures, you know what I mean? I could, uh, I could have used that platform to jump to maybe a different profession. Uh, the NIL, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I mean, you guys, Sedona Prince right now, my goodness, she's the biggest name in college basketball. I think her and Paige Beckers. And, um, you know, and, and she's an influencer, as you can, as you can see and tell. So I, I think she should be able to, to use that to her benefit monetarily. Um, I, I love that, uh, all our players feel like that the platform they have here at Oregon is, is one that they can use to better either their own personal brand or, um, uh, you know, whatever cause they're trying to jump on them. We've been fortunate, Sabrina, you look at her followership, Satu, you guys is among the, you know, the, the best in the, in the world right now, in terms of the influence that she, she has a, as an athlete and then now Sedona. And we'll have others, you know, that come behind. So I think it's great for them, you guys. Now, that being said, Sedona, if you're listening, you know, keep working on your craft. That's as important as TikTok. The better player that you are, the more TikTok followers you're, you could get. But uh, she's, uh, she, she's a great one, you guys, man. I, I, I love her and uh, everything about her. I love that she's a free spirit, really believes in, in what she does. James Crepia. Kelly, it certainly sounds like, you know, you, you're not against adding somebody in the portal necessarily, but you're, you're very comfortable with what you have. You were forthright during the season, though, in terms of deficiencies, whether it was when Tahina went down, that Taylor was the only other one who could really necessarily be a facilitator and make plays. And I know you've got Bigby coming in, um, but also that your team didn't have that alpha personality. And if you don't add anybody, that's still the case. And because Sedona and Niara are the only two who were even in the room with the big three from two years ago and nobody played with them. Who is going to be that personality if, uh, of any kind in leadership? If you don't bring somebody in, who's been there, done that one accomplished and, and, you know, can be the uh, enforcer of sorts and hold people accountable. Well, you know, Sabrina wasn't always the alpha as a freshman. <laughs> you know what I mean? She, she deferred to other people on that team. We had Maite Cazorla. We had Lexi Bando. We had some other pretty strong personnel. We didn't have many of those this year. We didn't have a Maite or Lexi Bando and that hurt us. Uh, but I think we can develop, you know, you look at Tahina's numbers, they are not far off of what Sabrina had as a freshman. So when you say we don't have another one of the big threes, who knows if Tahina Pow Pow is not another big three. I think it's too early to, to, to say that. Um, I think what, I think we have the leadership that can develop in this group. That being said, James, I will say this, and I've talked with a couple of my key players that I, you know, plan on, on getting leadership from, uh, the one area that I, I do think we, we need is, uh, a playmaker, you know, somebody who, 
when the shot clock's winding down, when the game, you know, whatever the case may be, they can create their own shot or, or a shot for somebody else. Now, I think Taylor Bigby will help. She is a, a player that can attack the basket and make some, uh, some things happen. I think Tahina, with another year of, you know, confidence, I think she can do that as well. So we, we do have a few. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there no, I'm not saying that our team is uh, perfect. But I like the, 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 you know, the group and the makeup. And if I start adding players, then am I not in the same position that I was last year? Lots of players, not enough playing time, kids that are unhappy, kids that end up, you know, returners who, who were keys in the years before aren't getting as much and now they want to leave. So, you know, our final four team, you guys, we had 10 players. Remember that roster? We had 10 and we lost Niara before the season. So we really only had nine for the entire season. And we, we know how that worked out. So I think sometimes a, a smaller roster is, is better, more conducive to team chemistry. Jerry Thompson. Yeah, coach, I'm sure there's a big upside on most every player on the roster. It can improve a lot between the freshman, sophomore, even some of the more experienced players. But I look at Maddie Scherr playing against Micah Pittman on her YouTube. <laughs> and she's, she seems to have a lot more offense than she was able to show this season. Would she be one that could really have a, a dramatic improvement on offense? Yeah, well, and she has to. <laughs> we, we need her to. Uh, but what she's going to give us is an elite defender, as you saw in the NCAA tournament and certainly in that last game. I mean, I'm not sure that game ends the same if, if she's in there healthy the whole time. But uh, yeah, she's uh, she's a really good player, you guys. That's one of those that I wish that you know maybe she gets more time during the season, and who knows what kind of extra confidence she would have had late. But yeah, we expect big things. I think the one thing with her and Taylor Bigby, we we can have a dynamic backcourt defensively because uh, Bigby can can absolutely flat out guard, and and she's long and athletic. Andrew Hobner. This isn't so much a basketball uh, question, Kelly, as much as it is with going back to Sedona and just the presence that she has elsewhere on social media. There's 235 countries in the world. If Sedona Prince's TikTok following was its own country, it'd be ranked 150. Uh, is that hard to, to wrap your head around sometimes, just how big the following some of your athletes have and how much that's grown? And even for someone like Sedona, I mean, like that's three times the number that Sabrina had when she was here. Is that, is that hard for you to kind of wrap your head around sometimes? Well, it is. I, and I wouldn't have known that. I knew she had a big following. She's actually pretty good though. I get on every once in a while just to make sure they're not doing crazy stuff, but uh, she is, um, she's unique. You guys, she's unique and not afraid to put herself out there. Yeah. Those are staggering numbers. So no, it's hard for me to, not fathom. I just reached 25,000 followers on Twitter and I thought that was cool. She gets like 25,000 an hour new ones. So her, her number is 1.9 million like uh, followers on TikTok. That's crazy. James Crepia. More to personnel management and recruiting. Uh, Kelly, because you're right. Look, the portal is now the way of the business. 30% of men's basketball is in the portal and Syracuse women's basketball has nine players in the portal. So I'm not going to make it about two or three. Um, but when you have a couple of consecutive classes where you, you lose out in some personnel, yes, you added some as well, but you, you lose out in personnel. How do you go about think What's like the market correction to this for you, for you guys, for you guys personally, in terms of how you go about now looking going forward for how do you look to build recruiting classes this upcoming year, the year after, so that you don't have a system shock down the road because you lost a few through this. And do you look for assist, you know, assistant contracts in the industry have been one year deals constantly. And Mark has obviously made it very, very clear the last couple of years he's seeking a head coaching job. That's you're never going to hold someone back from that, but do you look for assistant coach contracts to actually now be multi years because where is the market correction from the institution? If players are going to have the free movement, which everyone's for, then where does the institution come in to try and market correct to avoid what is happening elsewhere? Where I say nine and 10 players going in. I don't think anyone really envisioned that. 
No, I think it's going to self-correct. I think a lot of these kids are going to realize at the end of the day here, we're a good example. So we had 13 on our roster last year. We lose two. Everybody's saying, hey, you're going to pick up two. I'm going to go, no, I'm going to go with a smaller roster. Well, there's two less opportunities for somebody. And if you multiply that by, you know, I know most coaches would prefer that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't mind bringing in one like we did with Mignon more last, last year, you know, she was a perfect fit for us, exactly what we needed, but I'm not just going to go hunt a bunch of kids, uh, in the portal just because they're available. And I think at some point, James, a lot of these players are going to leave and let's face it. A lot of them are leaving not so very good programs because they're not so very good. You know, they're not playing much. Well, at some point <laughs> they're going to run out of options. Nobody wants them. So, you know, maybe they should have just kept that scholarship. Um, I, I just, uh, it's, it's, it's too bad that, uh, you know, I, it's not sure kids really, you know, want to battle for a position. It's like, you just want to hand it to you. You just want to go somewhere now that you think you're just going to play instead of battling. And, and um, so I, uh, yeah, that was a soapbox comment there, but um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's going to continue like this. I think this pandemic uh, accentuated it because, let's face it, nobody had a good time this year. It sucked for everybody, even if you're on the good teams, you know. Uh, it was just a tough year, and, and it's too bad people that, you, you know, are, are leaving be with, with that, you know, underlying or overlying everything. Um, what else What else was uh, – give me an uh, – you were – pretty loaded there where else you want me to go no just saying that do you think that the assistant coach contracts will oh. be adjust in terms of term length of term i'm not getting into the money component but just no, the I, stability that program stability will be further emphasized yeah i don't know maybe you're allowed uh, multi-year deals with assistants i don't know we don't do that at oregon uh, i don't believe um but no, I, I, I'm, I'm all for free movement. I'm not saying that I don't like the, the portal. I think the kids should be able to leave if they want. They should also suffer the consequences if for whatever reason it doesn't work out best for them. That's, that was your decision. But uh, I think same with the assistant coaches. And, you know, I've got a great staff and I've been fortunate. They've been with me this whole time. But, uh, you know, they all deserve their own head jobs at, at some point here. James, go ahead. Last thing I had to tell you was uh, just in terms of non-conference scheduling uh, for next year, uh, other than I can't even remember which one, either Paradise, Hawaii, wh whichever one you tied up for, it, but one of the non-conference. Um, is South Carolina still something you wanted to do, like we're trying to do this year? And with Sabrina coming to Seattle in September, that's super early, but is there any way to – do something around that. I mean, I don't know if you hold a scrimmage with Seattle in their gym just to go. <laughs> like, is there any cross promotional opportunities there with whether it's her or Ruthie or, or Satu, you name it? Uh, I, yeah, that I don't know. I don't know what we're allowed to do at that time of year, but uh, I will say this, James. Um, uh, I, I may be crazy or genius. But it looks like right now our Baylor game is still a possibility. You know, we were to do a home and home uh, with them starting in Vegas last year and then Dallas the following. Um, we are we have UConn at home. That's yet to be set and probably won't be set for a while. That's an ESPN deal. My guess is it'll be January or February on Big Monday. Uh, we are in the Bahamas and the field there is a who's who. Uh, South Carolina, Yukon, Oklahoma, Minnesota, South Florida. It's, it's a, every team in there is, is, is big time. And then uh, I have single games at Kansas State and at Northwestern. And Northwestern, uh, you know, almost beat Louisville in the second round. I had that game for most of the game. So our schedule is, uh, is nuts, actually. It's, uh, and then, you know, we're at Portland. And I think Portland's uh, doing it to celebrate the 25 year anniversary of one of the teams that I was an assistant coach on their, their last great, uh, great team uh, up there. So it's um, it's going to be a pretty, uh, a pretty 
demanding schedule. We'll just put it that way. And I'm not done. So if you want to put it out there, anybody that's looking for games, they got to be in Eugene this year, though. And we'll right. travel the next year. Any more questions for Coach Graves? All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate hey, you taking yeah. time. Hey, you guys, this is our last time together for a while. So anyway, I do just want to thank you for everything. I appreciate you guys covering our team and uh, always try to be as honest as I can with you. If you ever need me, just you got my cell phone. I think all of you have my cell phone, right? Just call anytime. Okay. All right. Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. See you guys.